My name is Bertrand La Chapelle. I'm the uh, uh, French Special Envoy for the Information Society. Uh, it's a pleasure to welcome you here. Um, before we start, and we will introduce each of the panelists now, can I make a, a, a strange um, request, which is uh, to ask people who are in the audience to tell us who they are as well, and so that we can um, interact and, and bring you uh, into the discussion. This is a workshop that is about uh, the national IGFs and the regional ones, as the IGF format is replicating in a certain way. And so the goal is to share experiences. It's not so much a, just a presentation, it's a discussion and interaction among people who have been involved in national uh, exercises and regional exercises. And the objective is to also exchange with you in the audience, because if you came to this workshop, it's also maybe to learn how you can develop that in, um, in your region. So can I, can I ask um, each of you to uh, briefly um, mention who you are? I'm Shane Duke Verisign. You're from Verisign? I'm Deepak Singla from the Ministry of Information and Technology in India. Excellent. Mark Moran, a member of the UK from the UK. Thank you. Excellent. Okay, from an internet service provider in Germany, because as the, the, the sound is not necessarily coming. Okay, excellent. Um, my name is Isotan. I'm from Korea. I work in Korea Information Agency as a legal researcher. Okay. The gentleman behind you, you are? <coughs> Same. Can we continue? I'm Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Italy. Italian delegation. Italy as well. Italy as well. Strong Italian delegation. Stefano Trumpi is here. Uh, it's very nice because we can. Can you? We did. You didn't do it first. World Press Freedom Committee. Okay, and this is beautiful because then we continue the presentation with the people who are the panelists. <laughs> Decided to start early. No, on time. <laughs> no, <to> go. Oops. <laughs> no, actually, we just um, went around with the uh, people in the audience. Um, we are people from Korea, from India, uh, from Versailles, uh, Italy, Germany. Um, so maybe, maybe you can come on this side. Uh, we arrange the, the, the seats so that we are facing more in a informal setting. So if the panelists or the people who are uh, here can come on that side, that would be uh, wonderful. Yes, go ahead. Um. So, uh, Demi, uh, can we start with you? Can you briefly introduce yourself and we'll come to the presentation. Uh, okay. uh, my, my name is Demi. Oh, it's okay? Okay. Take another chair and put Kasai there. Uh, Demi Gechko from Brazil. Demi uh, uh, I am related to the... the uh, .br registry, the country code uh, uh, top level registry in Brazil, and also to the Brazilian Internet Steering Committee. Uh, I'm a member of Brazilian Steering Committee. Would you do the intros again? We could not hear. Yeah. Can you do it again? Okay, uh, Demi Gechko from Brazil. No, still not. Still not? Closer. Hello? 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 Yeah, it's okay, but closer. Hello? Closer. Uh, okay. 
Put no. inside the mouth. <laughs> Preferably not. <laughs> okay. Uh, then again, Demi Gatesco from Brazil. Um, uh, 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 no. no, no, no. It's from Brazil. Yes. Is the microphone switched on? Yeah, it looks like. It looks like. It looks like. <laughs> Let's try again. Then uh, I am Demigetsko, no, from Brazil. No? Yes, yes, it's working. Yes, I am. I think it is. Oh, I and, uh, now it's working. Yes. And uh, I, I, I'm related since, since 80, 88, 87 with the Brazilian Network Initiatives, with the .br top level domain country code for Brazil. And I was a member of the Internet Steering Committee in Brazil, the Brazilian Internet Steering Committee. Thank you. Stefano Trumpi from uh, National Council of, of Research of Italy and uh, uh, being also GAC uh, representative and here uh, representing the uh, IGF Italy, recently constituted. Uh, Alan Michael, uh, member of the British Parliament uh, and uh, I've been involved with this process uh, since uh, attending uh, the World Summit in Tunis at that time as the uh, responsible minister um, and more recently been involved uh, as a backbench MP uh, with the UK IGF and with uh, our work in development. Uh, uh, a group to tackle, a partnership to tackle uh, internet-related crime. Good morning, Uri Lansipurov from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Finland and also the representative of Finland at the, on the GAC. So, as I said earlier, I'm Bertrand Lachapelle from the French Foreign Affairs Ministry. Kusai uh, Al-Shati, I'm the Deputy Chairman of Kuwait Information Technology Society. Do you have uh, your address? I will send you by mail. Mrs. Jian, I am from Senegal. I'm the Director of ICT in the Ministry in Charge of ICT. Um, I'm also the GAC representative of Senegal, and I am the member, I'm member of the MAC. Thank you. MAC. Uh, my name is Wolfgang Kleinwächter, I'm a um, professor from the University of Aarhus in Denmark, um, but I'm here also for um, the uh, Internet Governance Forum Germany, the IGFD, which was established um, recently. Okay, okay. Okay. Ah, there's another one, that's fine. Let's go ahead. Thank you. We'll keep this one and you keep the other one. I'm just trying to sort the papers I want to show it to you. Uh, I'm going to present to you the first European Pan-European Dialogue on Internet Governance Unidic that was held uh, two months ago. So, the general purpose, do, do I need this one or can I? No. Right. So, the general purpose of this, uh, of this workshop is to share experiences and to present a certain number of initiatives that have taken place in different countries at different times that are multi-stakeholder spaces or multi-stakeholder dialogues. We have here, um, and there's one person missing, which is Alice from um, uh, Kenya. You will see three uh, types of um, she exercises. She's nine o'clock and she's, she's coming back. Okay. Sorry. Um, there were some initiatives that were started before even the WISIS and the IGF. And this is particularly the case of Brazil and something we started in France back in 2001. The second um, type of exercises that are represented here are exercises that have spun off from the example of the um, IGF in general and that are being established at the national level. And we have exercises um, in Kuwait, in Senegal, in Germany, in Italy, in the UK, and in Finland. And there's another 
uh, layer in addition that is more recent even, which is the attempt to do things at the regional level. And we will have two examples, one uh, presented by uh, Thomas Schneider on the European level, which is the EuroDIG, European Dialogue on Internet Governance, and another one uh, presented by Alice from uh, Kenya, uh, who recently organized a regional East African uh, IGF. Most of these exercises are to prepare the IGF in general or to circulate the feedback from the IGF. And the general objective of this discussion is not only to rapidly present what people are doing, but also to identify a certain number of criteria or questions like um, how did it start? Who took the initiative? Who is it attached to? What is the composition? of the different uh, bodies. What is the methodology? What does it produce? All that sort of things. The purpose is to be able to share experiences and afterwards to try to catalyze further work so that people will want to create um, IGFs at the um, national level or regional level or even on a thematic basis, because you'll see that Italy also uh, has been uh, an active organizer of a forum on internet rights, which took a second um, instance this, this year. Uh, those who want to organize this forum have a sort of guideline or methodological tool to, uh, to do it. So without further ado, um, I would like to ask Demi to briefly explain how what was initially uh, the uh, management of the .br, the uh, local NIC, emerged into something multi-stakeholder that addresses uh, other issues. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we, we began in networking more or less 88 at that time with BitNet and HapNet and the uh, UCP and this kind of networks. The, the .br BR was registered, uh, delegated in 89, April 89. At that time, not, not for using the internet yet because we don't have any TCP IP connection, but for using the UCP uh, uh, network and so. And we, we, uh, at that time, we also launched a, a strong national research network initiative that proposed a, a, a country, level, country level backbone. It was very successful, and until now, it's working quite well. And we got the first TCP IP connection in, in January of 91. Uh, what I want to stress here is, uh, in the very beginning, we, we try to define uh, what will be under the .br. Then we defined the hierarchical tree uh, in March 91 uh, under the .br. And uh, the, the hypothesis we used at that time is more or less uh, 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 use it uh, now and uh, uh, in some way they, they shape it, the, the form the .br is working. For example, we, we define that we will have a tree, we will not be a flat uh, registry. Then we have a, a lot of subdomains, initially five or six, but now we have um, around 20. And we set specific rules for the subdomains because uh, in the very beginning we were thinking, okay, the, the, there is a department of uh, computer science in some university. You cannot uh, allow them to register the director under .br because there will be a lot of, of computer department uh, in other institutes and other universities then uh, if you have to, to, to have this in a meaning, meaning form uh, let's uh, ask the university to be under the .br and let's delegate this to university then we have the several levels under, under the university. Then th this is uh, this began more or less as a, a strict rules for many many subdomains for example the .gov uh, .br for the government in Brazil, we divided in states and allow each state to register the secretary of education of that state under the state.gov.br. Then uh, we, we began in, in a quite structured way and uh, we uh, allowed semantic to the subdomains and we try to maintain the semantics until now. In the beginning, we don't open the, the registry for uh, natural persons, just for institutions, but at that time, that was the, the academic network yet. And uh, the, the non-academic began to, to ask us to register in 94. Uh, at that time, we have a, a major change in Brazilian uh, telecommunication law. 
uh, that the Ministry of Telecom, Telecom uh, pro prohibited the major telcos to, to provide access to final user, uh, then the final user has to, to have access through uh, a, a the, the new uh, level of, of, of uh, structure that was the providers, then the, the telcos uh, will allow the providers to get bandwidth and then the providers will, will uh, sell or rent this to, to the final users. And also uh, the ministry said that uh, uh, we have to, to view the internet access not as a telecom uh, thing, but as an ad added value thing, not related. Uh, that decision uh, bring a lot of, 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 of uh, fast development uh, providers in the country. We also ha ha had the look to, to, to have the major newspaper and the major media institutions to try to be a provider. Then we got a lot of Brazilian content in a few time, in, in, a, in a small amount of time. Of course, the Brazilians are not all aware and uh, easy to, to read English or so, but we, we got a lot of Brazilian content in a small amount of time. And in '95, finally, uh, we opened to, to the whole commercial initiatives, and there was the, the launch of the Brazilian Steering Committee. Uh, they take care of the, of the managing of .br and the, the IP distribution. We got an address, a block of address uh, since '94. We are a national uh, internet registry for, for IPs. Oh. And uh, the, the, just to uh, illustrate the composition of steering committee, to, to cut this short, from the very beginning the, uh, the steering committee was uh, composed uh, with a majority of the civil society and, uh, of course, a significant part of the government also. The actual composition is uh, 21 members. Uh, nine of these members are uh, indicated by ministries uh, in the government. I can uh, read the names of the ministries that has the, the indication have, has a, a place in, in, the, in the board. And 11 was elected directly by, by segments of the, of the community. The, the providers elect one member, the academics elect three members, the NGOs elect four members and so. So you have, have colleges, basically. Yes. yes. How many colleges are there? Uh, we, uh, we have one college, uh, uh, the academic uh, community with three members, NGO with three members, ISPs with one member, uh, uh, infrast uh, telecom infrastructure with one member, and uh, uh, software and hardware for, hardware for IT with one member. And there is another one I'm not remember right now. Let me check the. But anyway, this is more or less the elected members. Let's see. Okay, we have uh, general users, uh, business users, also one member. Then there are four members from from the private sector, four members from NGO, and three members from academic. It comprises 11 members. How how was the uh, the, the structure of the steering committee um, decided? Was it the government, uh, the ministries together? We decided we will have this number of colleges. What was basically the process yeah in the beginning yeah in the beginning the government decided how, how we set the, the the first composition of the of the internet steering committee but after all we, we, we expanded the number of seats and actually the, the, there is uh, the discussion is inside the the, the very same uh, steering committee then uh, we, we of course the, the, uh, the last uh, structure was created by a decree uh, four years ago but uh, uh, even in the decree it's clear that uh, the, 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 the members that's not from government will be elected and so on. They'll, they'll have the same uh, stature. And know. once they are in the steering committee, they are on the same level. Yeah, on the same level. And, and the committee itself yes. is working as a yeah. body. As a they body. are elected separately, yeah. but yeah. work as a body. But note that the, the steering committee has no power to make laws or regulations. No. It just uh, 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 steals the, the internet and gives uh, good practices and uh, 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 tries to, to set up infrastructures that is good for the internet as a whole. For example, exchange uh, tra traffic exchange points, uh, uh, working in security and uh, uh, maybe uh, dealing with the, the, the legislative to try to avoid the laws that are uh, against the, the, the openness and the freedom of the internet and so, but also to, to bring uh, good laws. In, you know. and, and, and from the origin of managing the uh, registry itself, it is expanding on the uh, development of the network itself. 
As far as the, does it go into um, issues that are related more to content or so? Was it involved, no. for instance, in the whole debate that was mentioned yesterday regarding orchid, the child protection, or so on? Where no. does the limit? Yeah, go? What, what, what we're trying to do is, for example, to, to specify what kind of information you you have to 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 keep in a log that not violates the privacy or or, or not violates the, the rights of the users. For example, we were uh, fostering to use the the uh, Brazilian official time to to make the log much more uh, comprehensive and much more usable, and uh, to to restrict the log to the IP numbers and the the exact time of the login and logout. Then we try to 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 set some uh, bottom line rules. Uh, and not to, to, to go in content or something like this. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Demi. Uh, as you saw, one of the key questions was not only the competence of the, uh, of the body, but also how the committees are composed. Because this is a key question whenever you want to set up something that is multi-stakeholder. There is this notion of colleges, and as you know in the WISIS and later on, there is always this debate about how many colleges. Are there three colleges, civil society, private sector, and governments? And there's always a college that doesn't fit into the, into the mold. And so for each of the um, subjects, there might be different colleges because the more technical might yeah technical actors and the more policy oriented. Any, any other comment on uh, or, or any specific difficulty that was encountered in setting up or in the functioning that you overcame and, and how? No, I suppose we, we are doing quite well. Uh, of course, we're facing some some uh, tensions time by time, but uh, I suppose we, we got to, to manage this, and uh, I suppose we are in the right direction to, to permit all the, the uh, segments of the, the society to, to get what they want from the Internet. Okay. And it's uh, in terms of status? What is the status? Is it an association? Is it a it's, public entity? No, it's, it's a, a, a non-for-profit. Uh, the, the committee is a committee. So there is no juridical uh, personality. It's, it's just a bunch of people. <laughs> but <laughs> but the, the steering committee has the uh, Nick under, under, under his uh, umbrella. And the Nick is a, a non-for-profit organization that collects money from, from the domain registration and uses this money uh, as uh, as the steering committee decides for, for the benefit of, benefit of the Internet. Okay, thank you, Demi. Um, I will speak now briefly in the same category about an initiative or um, um, a system that was put in place in France uh, back in 2001 that is called the Forum des Droits sur l'Internet. And whereas in the um, Brazilian case, it started on the uh, technical management of the domain. In France, it was completely separated, and it still is, from the uh, .fr management, which is done by AFNIC. The idea in 2001 was fundamentally to set up a multi-stakeholder, we would call that at that time, co-regulation uh, system, a space called a forum, forum on rights on the internet, and promote the interaction between the different categories of actors, elaborate codes of conduct, for instance, that can be discussed among um, private actors or between private actors and civil society uh, organizations, or with and in the presence of uh, government and administration representatives. The, the system is a non-for-profit association that is independent from the government, but the steering uh, committee, likewise, the Conseil d'administration, uh, as representatives in various proportions of governmental administrations, the um, consumers, some uh, private actors like ISPs or the companies that provide services on the internet. And one of the interesting elements is that it has on not only developed the um, discussion format, but it can produce recommendations that are sent to the, uh, the government. It is called AVI. 
recommendations. And it also developed a mediation uh, activity. So it's very much oriented towards this notion of co-regulation, which is having the actors, it's not self-regulation like um, business doing it on its own, but bringing the actors together to develop codes, common norms, principles, and so on, and um, also trying to resolve disputes before they go to court and also to give advice to the government. One last point is that it turns out that the person uh, who initiated this, uh, unfortunately couldn't come uh, for the IGF here, she was uh, expected, it's called, she's called Isabelle Fag pierrotin and she was in a structure in France that is called the Conseil d'État, which is the highest uh, administrative jurisdiction. And so she got involved in the discussion of internet matters back in 1996-97 and she felt that this notion of co-regulation was necessary. She pushed for it and she convinced the government at that time to set up this independent structure with links uh, with, the, uh, with the government. The last point is that uh, she is also on the council of the privacy commissioner in, uh, in France, which is making a very strong link to the rights dimension. So we have two examples, and I, I finish here. We have two examples of initiatives that predated the WISIS, basically. One that came from the technical base and that developed more uh, policy uh, advice. And the other one that started really from the um, rights and legal dimension under the co-regulation mode. Both are at the same time informal, related to the government, and with administrative structures that are uh, independent. Now we will, we will move to various initiatives uh, in different countries. The objective is not necessarily to go in very much detail, but to explain what the choice was, who took the initiative, who is participating in the exercise, what kind of um, activities this um, entity does, and what is its relation with the IGF? Is it just a preparatory exercise uh, back and forth? Or is it also developing activities at the, at the national uh, level? Uh, maybe we will start with um, Alan Michael okay. from the, uh, the UK. Thank you very much indeed. Um, I, I think, can I just trace the history? As you say, uh, Bernard, it, it's, it's always interesting. Uh, whatever you do, which you have a good idea, the French have always invented it before you. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Um, and do a Minitel. <laughs> the, the, I mean, essentially the idea of the Internet Governance Forum was invented at Tunis and it's worth reminding ourselves why that was. Mm. It was essentially to give some physical location uh, for dynamic coalitions and enhanced cooperation, which were the big idea uh, of that event. Um, after Athens, um, between Tunis and uh, Athens, I'd left the, uh, the government and I was a bit disappointed when people said it had been useful, but it had been very much a talking shop. Uh, and uh, we took the view that we needed to get the partners from the UK together so that instead of, uh, as had happened previously, the government coming to give the voice of uh, uh, people in the UK into the IGF process, uh, that we would get together the, uh, the partners. Brazil uh, we felt uh, that this had been better again, but that still the process was slow. Uh, and that's why at the end of uh, the event in Rio, I made a promise on behalf of the UK delegation that what we would do would be to establish the UK IGF, um, develop examples of good practice, uh, seek parliamentary engagement, and focus on a couple of issues, uh, criminal activity related to the internet and child protection, as means of demonstrating the value at a national level, the value of the of the partnership. So it was very much uh, brought together with the uh, need to enable uh, a contribution to be made into the IGF internationally. That was the purpose uh, of, of bringing people uh, together. Um, we, the topics that we chose were for two reasons. One, because they, we thought they were the most important, but also because they were areas where we thought that we could actually make a contribution. And I 
think those two things are worth keeping in mind. There's no point in having uh, wide-ranging discussion about things you can't change, uh, and <coughs> although we do that a lot of the time, uh, uh, and uh, uh, it, 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 it's, there's no point in just dealing with things that aren't too important. In the past year, we've uh, developed that process. So we've gone from just getting people together to prepare for the next IGF uh, to uh, developing a, a program of work for the uh, UK IGF um, with the uh, focus on delivering on what we promised at, at Rio last year uh, because that gave us a, a, a framework and to reporting back at Hyderabad. Uh, we don't have a written constitution uh, so uh, that's why I was smiling when you asked whether the the, uh, uh, the constitutional arrangements uh, were not even a committee. Um, it's, a, it's a very loose uh, relationship between people. I think we will have to find a way of, of actually putting some sort of framework around it for the future. But what we were concerned with was to get people together without necessarily having to make any commitment or sign up to something or be a member uh, to work out what was the best way of going forward. So we've started first with the action and second with the relationships in order then to say, well, let's describe the relationship when we, once we've worked it out rather than yeah. starting off with a theoretical uh, constitution. Um, the partners, and I think this is the, the key element, and it's actually very important for the international dimension, are the government, uh, the Department for Business has lead responsibility, the three people from that department as part of our delegation uh, this week, and government obviously includes regulator, it includes law enforcement. Uh, secondly, business or industry, uh, because unless you have that engagement, the people who are developing uh, the uh, use of the internet very, very centrally engaged, then the whole process becomes semi-detached. Thirdly, members of parliament across party. Uh, my colleague Ian Taylor at the back there is a conservative member of parliament, like me, he's a former minister, um, and uh, w we have four members of parliament here. Uh, this this week. Uh, and fourthly, civil society. Civil society has largely been represented in the UK by people who've been uh, focused on uh, eradication of child abuse, uh, because I think like many others, the uh, Brazilians have, have, have taken a, a similar view. This is one of those things around which uh, people can uh, can can uh, coalesce for, for action. Uh, but we've recognized that dealing with that, which we have in a part partnership approach in, in the UK uh, then allows us to move on to issues that may be more difficult uh, in terms of building consensus uh, and agreement. So partners then, government, business, members of parliament, civil society, where we're having to uh, create, if you like, the means of representing wider civil society uh, as, as one of our tasks uh, going forward. On your questions, uh, who took the initiative or who takes the initiative, it's been collective, it's been permissive. Uh, certainly the engagement of members of parliament has been crucial uh, to creating the, the right environment and nominators are uh, a domain name uh, company, a not-for-profit not company, has been absolutely central in enabling industry, uh, parliament and the other players uh, to talk to each other in a neutral space and it's needed the uh, permission, if you like, the support uh, of government and industry players in order to move forward. Have we gone far enough? Is there sufficient engagement? Uh, I wouldn't say so yet. We need to push government across departments to be more active and we need industry uh, particularly to recognize that the alternative to this cooperative process as I would describe it um, is a regulatory or a legislative uh, one, uh, the sort of response to Google if you like um, uh, that we heard about yesterday uh, and that therefore the engagement of industry is in the best interest of industry. It's not another burden uh, on, on industry. How did we choose the issues? Discussion, consensus building, a lot of hard work, but basically cooperative governance, uh, uh, collective action. Are we doing or enabling as a, as a body? A question you asked, Bennett. Um, the answer is both. Uh, I think the key uh, points are not to duplicate. If somebody is already doing activity, then uh, draw them into engagement rather than duplicate 
duplicating what they're already doing, respect what they're doing. The Internet Watch Foundation, in case, case of child abuse, for, uh, for instance, don't duplicate that activity, but make them a part of the equation. Would you, would but, you say uh, that there's a catalytic role of bringing people together and then they go afterwards uh, yes. with new partners and expand what they do? Yes, very much so. I mean, I think I think for the for the future, uh, expanding on the idea of uh, dynamic coalitions, perhaps within uh, the UK, perhaps in encouraging people to be involved in the international uh, uh, work of that sort, is is very much the uh, the the way to go. Uh, don't leave a vacuum. It's very important to identify where there are holes, yep. Yep. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, be brave. Uh, the, the 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 people feel insecure if there aren't lines of responsibility and structures and all the rest of it. But actually, uh, 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 reflecting the internet itself, a more cooperative approach, I'd regard it not, uh, not as co-regulation, but cooperative regulation, where perhaps at the end of the day you may need to put some legislation underpinning, but if you can, if you can develop it without trying to constrain it by writing in, a, in advance, by, by reflecting uh, the uh, development of activity, the development of business engagement, uh, and so on, it's much more likely to be long-term sustainable. But that means uh, being a bit brave about not needing uh, the uh, uh, the diagrams to be uh, too structured, and the account uh, the accountabilities to be too straightforward. We're in the process at the moment now of starting the first steps of saying how can we describe all of this and make sure there's a proper accountability because you need those protections uh, for when things go wrong and perhaps things may some way down the road. But we haven't found felt the need up to now uh, to do more than make sure that the partners get together and work together. The, the interesting uh, thing in the uh, in the UK case is the involvement of parliamentarians. Uh, it is something that, as far as I know, has not been pushed uh, so far. And uh, it is a very interesting uh, issue because, like you said yesterday in the open session in the afternoon, a lot of the issues we're debating regarding internet governance are actually the same type of issues that uh, national governments and parliaments have been debating, balance between rights and responsibilities. And uh, it is important to have the type of angle uh, that uh, parliamentarians uh, have. The question is how much of it and how much is the emergence of those group also a question of personal connections between a few people that are willing to be brave enough. In other terms, in many cases, my impression, especially around the people here, and we'll see it further, is that it takes a few people who know each other to get together and, and seed the thing. Is it the way it worked in, in the UK? Uh, yeah, yes, I think it is, but I think that engagement of parliamentarians is absolutely crucial. Otherwise, it's merely government. Uh, governments, by definition, are mistrusted by the press and the media, if not by, the, uh, by everybody else. Uh, whereas if there's a partnership uh, and it goes across party, I mean, I've, I've greatly valued uh, Ian's engagement, for instance, because that gives a certain authority. We're able to say to people within our own party, don't start to think about legislating in this area uh, because there is a process which we believe you can trust uh, to try to develop. That may lead to the need for legislation, but trust the partnership to identify, you know, involving industry, involving uh, civil society, in, in, involving regulators and all the rest of it to identify the areas that are needed. Otherwise, I mean, what, what I've said to people, for instance, is uh, in the UK a few years ago, when some children were attacked by dogs, we ended up with the Dangerous Dogs Act. Uh, it's, com <laughs> it's, it's completely ineffective as a piece of legislation. Uh, it's, it's, it's hit the wrong target. It's caused enormous complications. It's very bureaucratic. And the last thing that we want is a Dangerous Computers Act. And therefore, the engagement of parliamentarians and government is absolutely crucial uh, in, in order for them to say, we're part of this process, we trust the process, we can make our input to the process. The government can say the, these are issues that we, what we, we feel ought to be explored through the, uh, um, through the, the work of the um, coalition, if you like, that we have been building. Thank you. Um, to make a balance, I will um, start on, on, on this side and maybe ask uh, Maimuna um, what is being set up in, uh, in Senegal and 
where is the process uh, of, of national IGF in relation to the international uh, IGF? Uh, did we have a mic on this side? Yes. Hello, good morning. Um, for those who are not there, when I introduce myself, I'm Maimuna Jubjan. I work for the ministry in charge of ICT in Senegal, and I'm the director of the ICT. Uh, um, in Senegal, we start um, in at the 3rd of May 2006, uh, we launched our national forum on an internet information society. And we involved government, uh, the prime minister, regulator agency, ministry in charge of and uh, civil society organization, NGO, academy, major, the private sector enterprise working on ICT, and the local um, uh, co co collectivity, uh -huh. um, the council and association of local elected. And we create a forum by a ministerial decree. So it was a formal decision by so ministerial was, decree to yeah, create? It was. Okay. We launched it uh, in the big hotel. And the forum, we launched it uh, with the ministry in charge of ICT. And we set up a bureau, an executive bureau, with five members and um, potential members um, who may be involved uh, depending on issue. We also uh, create um, some commission work on some issue like the communication around ICT. Is, the, the, is the mic working? Uh, I don't have the feeling it's working. Mm -hmm. it's sounds yeah, but it's so, so. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think this one was working better. Thank you. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and we set up some um, several commission on communication on ICT fields, on the digital solidarity agenda, on internet governance, uh, particularly on security, spam, uh, the cost of the connection, protection of personal data, multilingualism, and so forth. And another question for monitoring the results of the WSIS at the national level and also a commission on ICT application and local content. And last one was on international and regional cooperation. Um, I think uh, that was done. And right now we are working, because we changed the minister, so the process slowed down. <laughs> and right, yeah, yeah, I think we need to, to share our, our experience and to talk. What, no, it depends on, you know, what the minister think about this. If he's not very committed, or committed on, you know, on these fields, it, it depends. So we, the, the committee slowed down, but we, all those guys who, are, who was involved on it continue doing the work uh, inside their organization. Uh, it was my case at the national level, uh, on, on the ministerial level. Uh, for example, for this, um, this IGF, we have several meetings of preparing it. And on each meeting, we have, will invite not only those guys, the people coming from the government, but all the stakeholders. And um, we, what we are looking now is what kind of structure uh, could we have? If it will be like this first one inside the government, all an association where the government must just be part on it. Uh, we are thinking about that because also we in we are very 
involved on at the regional level. And on October, we organized with um, ISOC, AFRINIC, ICA, a regional uh, conference. But on a specific issue, we face on our region. It was not only on the IGF and the processes of participation on internet governance, but also on issue of access and specifically at the universal access. Uh -huh. And uh, I think the way we, we will uh, promote is to use this kind of uh, forum to tackle our specific uh, problem, our specific issue. Not um, only what's going on on the process, but what can, what is interesting uh, in our community for on this process. I think, I think the, uh, the last point you make is a very important one that each of those forums at the national or and you'll see at the regional level picks basically in the agenda of the uh, IGF or of internet governance the issues that resonate more. Uh, you were mentioning it earlier saying we want to choose issues on which we can not only we are interested in them but we also can have an impact or, or raise um, the profile of the issue and address them, but uh, it has to be something that is more the sensitivity of the region or something that is important for the region. The second point that I want to pick on what you said is this sort of tension between wanting an involvement at an official level by the government because it brings recognition, legitimacy and stability and the dependency on who is in charge at that moment knowing that this person can, can change and rotate. And this notion of leadership of one particular uh, minister, for instance, is something that is very delicate. The more the organization is a sort of governmental body, the more the responsibility on a personal basis of the minister who drives it uh, is important. Because it can be a tremendous boost for launching something, mm -hmm. but if the person disappears afterwards, then part of the momentum it can, can go down. Um, any other? Uh, yeah, and also we try to involve the parliament because our former minister is now a deputy. So he, <laughs> <laughs> he say he wants to be now in, in the forum and I think it can help because he is in charge of the commission, parliamentary commission of communication in ICT. So I think we will involve it for the next, next body. What is the, uh, the current structure? It is a sort of administrative commission? Yeah, okay. it is. And you are thinking about somehow externalizing? Yeah. Okay. Th this is an interesting uh, tension uh, because without getting into details, within France we are thinking about the evolution of what was this precursor and moving into something that would be more in between the completely independent structure and connected with the government and it's an, an ongoing debate. Finding the right balance is delicate. Um, I might now go to, yeah, to Wolfgang, to, to say uh, where you are at in uh, Germany. Okay, thank you very much. Um, you know, the uh, ITFD goes back to the business process. During the business process, the German uh, Ministry for Economics had uh, established a system of consultation with stakeholders. So we had individual consultations between the government and the private sector and individual consultations between the government and civil society to prepare the various webcoms and the summits uh, since 2002. And this was quite uh, a good exchange uh, so that the Germans were better prepared uh, for the various um, business meetings. Um, after um, tourists uh, and um, after the first IGF, the, the essence meeting, you know, uh, we discussed it and said it would be better to have joint consultations, not separately between government and private sector on the one hand and government and civil society on the other hand. So, and the, um, um, Mr. Voss is here in the room from the German Ministry uh, of Economics. And so we had um, a joint consultation 
and uh, where you know various groups of our 150 people in the room representing um, key stakeholders from Germany and discussed you know what to do with these issues raised by the IGF in essence and to prepare for Rio de Janeiro. Uh, during this meeting you know we said okay we should probably go one step further and then there was the debate who takes the lead and uh, because the, the, the internet is um, um, driven to a high degree by non-governmental stakeholders. And so the, uh, a group came together from the civil society and the private sector and said, you know, we should take the lead in this process. And it was the German Association for the Internet Economy, ECHO. Uh, we have two members from ECHO here in the room. And it was the uh, one of the largest trade unions, um, Verdi, which is the trade union for the service people. It was Annette Mühlberg. She was also the chair of the at-large advisory committee from ICANN. And so, and I think these two, um, let's say, um, well recognized and well established bodies in Germany that okay you know we as representative of these two stakeholder groups take the lead and you know attract some other groups including the German Association for the United Nations it was DENIC, the registry for the DE and uh, three or five other groups and uh, then quote unquote, we invite the government. So that means we take the lead and we invite the government. And it was a, 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 a real good stakeholder, multi-stakeholder discussion when we had this first uh, IGFD uh, just six weeks uh, uh, before, or three weeks ago. And um, uh, Mr. Foss was also involved in the uh, final debate. We had somebody from the European Commission and um, civil society people, private sector people were around 120 people uh, for a one day seminar. Uh, what we did was we discussed three issues. One was the access issue and uh, it was an, let's say, an um, input from the forum and we ended up with a debate about the situation in Germany with broadband access. Uh -huh. So that means the, um, the message from the IGF ended up in Germany discussing, you know, what will be the future of broadband access in Germany. In the second session we discussed privacy and uh, security issues and here um, we, uh, you know, uh, discussed also uh, problems in Germany, in particular a recent decision by the Constitutional Court, you know, which cleared that the uh, home computer is also protected by the privacy of your home. And I think this is a, was a very important um, element and I think this would be probably a good message from Germany to the IGF. So it means messages are going forward and backward from the IGF to the country and then from the country back to the IGF. And then we had a final session about the international dimension, the future of the IGF and ICANN issues and things like that. So the whole uh, day produced a document um, which uh, is also distributed here. I have some copies here which is called Messages from Berlin. So that means uh, you can uh, read it. It's just one page and summarizes more or less the core messages. Um, as far as the structure is concerned, Bertrand asked it for the structure. There's no structure. It's just a voluntarily combination of engaged individuals and institutions. Um, it remains to be seen whether it makes sense, you know, to formalize it a little bit more. But, you know, this uh, loose collaboration also has its own dynamic. And uh, so that means there is um, uh, no... no um, it was also, you know, with low budget and it was just people came together and organized it. The weak point certainly is compared with, with the UK is that we were not able to um, uh, attract members of the parliament. Uh, I think this would be certainly, you know, um, a, a big step forward. Um, I think each of the five parties in the German Bundestag has now a, a spokesperson for the internet. And, you know, to bring this uh, parties, um, uh, this spokesperson, closer to this debate would be very helpful, in particular what, um, uh, what you just said, you know, to improve also the legislation process in the parliament. Uh, because a lot of projects are coming top down, very often initiated by members of the parliament who have no real understanding how the internet works. They uh, want to react to some 
public debate in the press and then you know have some ideas which uh, if it goes down to the reality of the internet <coughs> its architecture you know are just lip service or you know window dressing or something like that so and so in so far such a dialogue to include the parliamentarians into this debate would be very helpful so this is our homework we have to do uh, for uh, 2009 and uh, a final point also you know we uh, were said okay this is uh, designed as a preparatory meeting for the Hyderabad so that means it's uh, we see that as a a chain. So IGF is, in my eyes, is a process. It's not just an event. It's a process, you know, which has some highlights, you know, over the years on the various levels. And then, you know, the big bang, which is always the, the big IGF, and then it goes back. In so far, you know, these messages forward and backward to see it as a process. I think these are some, some important elements to understand this as a whole process. And I'm very happy and thankful for, uh, to Bertrand that he organized this because it shows you know how many uh, local and regional initiatives are meanwhile involved and and this creates all together the IGF it's not just you know this one single event which takes place here in these four days in Hyderabad thank you thank you Wolfgang um, Demi Hello. if this one works it's working no, no I think this one this is why I would it's working. But it doesn't it's, it's not as loud as the okay. other one. So. No, ju ju just to take the opportunity to what uh, Wolfgang said, to add that in the last six months, more or less, the, we are working in the steering committee to uh, maybe, maybe to, to, to write a decalogue, uh, okay. not, not have to be 10 items or so, but it's a way to have an, an answer. When we, we, we got some, some uh, law project, this is not uh, realistic to the internet. Then you say, okay, this, this project of law violates the number five of our decalogue that says that uh, the, the, there has to be uh, free, free access to the internet or the, the uh, network is never guilty of, of anything, but the, the people are all guilty, not the network. We are trying to, to build this decalogue and maybe use this as a basis for answering when we have some kind of, of new situation. Thank you. Could I just make a point about the engagement of MPs? Uh -huh. uh, uh, we're difficult animals to trap. It's like herding cats. Um, the, uh, the, the point I would make is that last year uh, we had four MPs from the UK. We also had four members of the European Parliament. And I know they were disappointed at not being here. Uh, uh, Malcolm Harbour, for instance, uh -huh. is a British MEP. Uh, and he was spitting teeth uh, because I believe it was the Commission that decided it wasn't safe. To, uh, to travel, and that's a pity because I think the engagement at the, par at the European Parliament level I is important to any development at the European level, although I'm looking forward to interest to hear about things that we haven't heard about uh, in a short time because how you join up between uh, national uh, initiatives. I know there's an, uh, the, the MEPs were, were planning to try to make some outreach, and I'm not sure whether we're going to hear about a, a parallel universe or something that's part of the, uh, of the same thing. I also think that at the international level, uh, we, there is no point in doing something which I think has been tried which is to try, to try to create a separate parliamentary stream for the IGF. Uh, we need actually for this to be seen uh -huh. as mainstream for the interparliamentary union and for, for instance, the Commonwealth Parliamentary uh, 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 Engagement, the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association, because MPs are used to engaging there on a series of complex issues, uh, whereas the issues of the IGF are seen as being somehow about the technology, and they're not. They're about the policies and people and so on. So I think there's a task and I think we, we as certainly as our group uh, from the UK are scratching our heads about how to create links with parliamentarians uh, elsewhere. It'll probably be easier across Europe than, uh, than uh, elsewhere but things like the Commonwealth links could turn out to be uh, quite useful because of course that bridges from uh, developed to uh, developing uh, 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 countries and new Commonwealth and so on. No, I, I think the notion of no separate parliamentary, can you give it to uh, uh, the notion of no separate parliamentary stream is a very important uh, element uh, to keep uh, in mind. Uh, we'll try to, to go until the, uh, the end of the, uh, uh, of the row. I, I understand the, uh, the, uh, the desire to, uh, to present um, uh, in full detail. Uh, it's 
It's natural and it's good. Uryo, I'm giving you the floor after Wolfgang because I think in Finland it's been more or less the same. It's an evolution of what happened in the preparation for the WISIS. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Petra, and thank you for organizing this. Uh, yeah, that's, that's right. Uh, but first of all, I want to say that Finland is a rather small place. We have less inhabitants than, than Hyderabad, about <laughs> five million. And that means that, uh, <coughs> on one hand, it means that, that, that uh, it is actually quite easy to get multi-stakeholders around one table. Uh, because it's such a small place and everybody knows everybody else and the hierarchies uh, are rather flat and, uh, and the fences uh, uh, between various uh, stakeholders are rather low. Uh, so that uh, before WSIS uh, there was a multi-stakeholder uh, 